Hello and welcome back to Malaysia. After leaving the Cameron Highlands, we met with a friend and drove up to Bukit Fraser, one of my favorite herping locations in the entire world, where I've spent so much time in the past and found a myriad of incredible snakes. Let's see if we can do something similar this time. Oh, I'm so hyped when you Whoa, hello. Whoa, hello. Yeah. He's giving it a 10. Yeah. This is actually a straight 10. Possible three meter long Boigasinodon. Yeah. And we are here at Fraser's Hill with, <laughs> introduce yourself. Wainson. Wainson what? Wainson. It's time for our first daytime walk. Got Wainson here, putting on the hiking boots, yep. getting serious. Cass is up there, quite the opposite of serious. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see if we can turn anything up. First daytime walk of this time at Fraser's Hill. I'd say 50% chance we get something maybe. Oh, 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 oh. First snake as detected. Oh, come here, come here. You're a wriggly, you're a wriggly. Okay, so I got it to calm down. Now you can have a proper look at what we call an adult Channard's reed snake. And this is why I say this is one of the smallest snakes in Southeast Asia, like non-blind snakes, because this is the biggest one Wainson has ever seen. And look, it's still absolutely tiny, but they're very cute little things with nice little chevron patterns on the back of the neck. And of course that, uh, that sort of salmon pink to orange venter. Orange spots down the body. A pretty plain mountain snake, but nice to encounter one of these already. A good sign, so early. Maybe that's our one snake of this walk out of the way already. We'll see. But maybe we can turn up another. We'll see what's going on. Anyway, I'm just gonna put this one back in the leaves now. Guys, check out this insane shield bug that Wainson found. Like I've seen some members of this family before, but never with such incredible patterning. Like that is such insane, striking, red and green and look at its eyes it even has like kind of cartoonish white eyes with large black pupils that thing is ridiculous get a close-up of that and what's funny is when i picked it up can you see that my parts of my finger are orange it sprayed some like really powerful smelling substance on me so yeah it's one of the like shield bugs which can well some people in europe and stuff call them stink bugs that can discharge that strong smelling stuff but yeah the second thing on this walk i'm going to need to wash my hands from but that is one of the most insane shield bugs i've ever seen okay chanada and the bug were the only two things of interest but now we're going to go for a quick cruise and uh, then get dinner we probably won't find anything driving but if we do well it'll be very exciting honestly today is not going too bad at all we just after like well mercedes after like an hour of driving, we just got back up to the top of the hill and take a look at this in my hand. Juvenile cave racer crossing the road, middle of the daytime. Something like this is exactly what we were waiting for, hoping for. It can be so tough to find snakes during the day, but somehow we've rustled up two today, including this, well, I would say beautiful, but it's actually a little bit dull for a juvenile cave racer. Maybe it's just about to enter shed, but I will say, whoa, hello, whoa, hello. It's got some beautiful blues on the head. The blues on the head, the yellow stripe is not very strong, but the blues on the head are very impressive. It wasn't biting at all at first, but it does not like the video camera one bit. It's being quite uncooperative in the hand. It's constantly, they're very smooth bodied these, so they tend to slip out of the hand a lot, but look at that puffing up the neck and that blue on the head is so beautiful on this one. Don't think I've ever seen one with quite such vibrant blue on the head. And I guess, yeah, towards the tail, the stripe does become very pronounced. First time ever seeing this species alive in Peninsula Malaysia for me. So that's a cool addition. And uh, yeah, what a find, a great day. And let's see if we can try and rustle up one more snake before a nightfall. What I love so much about the mountains is that you can go out walking during the day and not be too hot. You can just walk around all day if you want, look for snakes, find snakes and enjoy yourself, which really is a privilege in Asia. As well as snakes, we were looking for ice cream today. We tried five different shops. None of them had ice cream and this one was closed. But on the way back from our walk just now, we actually managed to rustle up some ice cream. I'm trying the yogurt, strawberry yogurt, mm. is it? Yeah, I've got one of those, but right now I had to go ham on the Belgian to chocolate Lux Magnum. This one goes stupid. This is a solid 9.5 out of 10. Possibly my favorite ice cream right now. 
Also, we went on a bit of like an ice cream frenzy. You see, I got a yogurt one in there. Wayneson got some kind of green Solero thing. I also got one of these chocolate fudge Cornettos in there and we got a tub. So the ice cream session has truly passed onto the boss here. Yeah, we're never gonna run out of ice cream this trip again. <laughs> we're not letting it happen again. This, this got desperate. Well, this strawberry yogurt one doesn't hit as hard as the Korean Greek yogurt one in Thailand. This one I'd only give like a six. I don't think I'd buy this one again. Maybe maybe even a 5.5, it's, it's kind of average. But uh, let's do a new review. What's, what about your ice cream, Cass? Wait, what the, what the boss is that? It's what? a carrot. <laughs> what do you rate it? Solid eight out of 10, it's a nice carrot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look who's behind the wheel. Jeez, you can't see shit though. <laughs> okay, first snake of the night in the rain. Little juvenile male Fakatus. Pretty expected snake to see out in this kind of weather. The rain never got super heavy, but it's definitely heavy enough to make vipers and slug snakes active. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some more of these and uh, also the other species of slug snake that you get here the one we haven't seen yet tonight but yeah just gonna get this little guy off the road little juvenile male Fakatus. next road cruise find is a uh, sicilian i don't actually know what the species is here maybe ichthyophis superchai as well would probably make sense that's the one we still get in the highlands of southern thailand but i'm not sure about malaysian malaysia's uh, sicilian complex but yeah pretty cool little little beastie legless amphibian thing which is very worm-like but believe it or not this is an amphibian which makes it herpetofauna so always cool to see guys check it out another one for the moth lovers who watch my channel you guys will remember the atticus atlas from tak the largest moth in the world this is again one of the largest moths in the world this is atticus edwards eye which possibly has an even wider wingspan but isn't quite as large overall you can tell it's Atticus Edwards eye because it has these very elongated tips of the wings, which is just very cool, honestly. Some people say it looks like a snake, but I think, well, Cass pointed out that that one looks like an eagle, like the broken way makes it look just like a bird's head. We found it and it was just destroying itself, confused by lights, bashing itself on the ground over and over again. But I managed to catch it in a way which I did the least amount of damage to it. Like I just got a firm hold on its legs and its body after chasing it around like a madman for ages, which I wish I filmed. And now we can get a look at this incredible animal. What an animal. This is one of those like jungle beings, which really just blows your mind. Anyway, I'm going to take it somewhere where I can put it safely, where it won't destroy itself. I just on my... What the boss? When do you think you picked that up? I don't know. I literally just stat. Um, look, <laughs> this guy just looked down at his foot. And all there's a Malayan flying frog with Gracophorus or Zangixilus promenanus just right. glued to his foot. That's, what that's the boss? <laughs> no, I thought I felt something on my foot, and then I looked down and it was the last <laughs> thing I expected. Like, it's such a pretty one as well. Yeah, it's already darkening up. Look, it's yeah. it's for some reason it's already stressed by being, or maybe it's just chameleon changing to the color of your shoe. No, it's probably no, just yeah, stressed yeah. out. But uh, I never showed these on my channel before, despite finding them a couple times. Um, on my trips absolutely incredible beautiful tree frog one of the most like kind of um, almost see-through at some points of the body very like south american we're not spoiled for frogs out here but this is one of the nicest tree frogs we get out here and you can't see it right now you can kind of see a hint of it but the uh the skin between the, the webbing between their feet on their rear legs is bright like orangey red which is awesome all right just picked ourselves up a new species for the trip May look similar to the slug snake from the Cameron Highlands. It isn't the same genus, but this one here is Asphenodipsis vertebralis. You can tell because it has that cream vertebral stripe, distinct banding on the body, even at this size, and some black spotting on the venter. Generally like a different color of gray as well. Quite distinct from the other one, albeit morphologically somewhat similar in terms of its like size and shape. And it also has those bright red Asphenodipsis mountain complex eyes which is uh, always nice to see it's been many many years since i've seen this species honestly very very many years this one occurs up in the highlands but not quite at such high elevation as las galanensis the ones we we're seeing in the cameron highlands even though both occur here these are kind of more occurring in the lower areas below like 1500 meters whereas las galanensis really does prefer like high oh i've now he's freaking out stop freaking out 
He's also puffing up a lot, which is what these guys do. Something they do and uh, something kind of annoying in a way. Not being particularly cooperative on video, but I'm sure you got a good look at him by now. Nice little sluggy. I'm going to let this guy go. So high, wait, wait me, and, me and Wayneson have been on the grind tonight. We decided to bin off walking because honestly, walking was finding snakes, but driving is often how you find the rare ones around here. And we were just in the car chatting, seeing nothing for an hour. And then look at this on the road at high elevation, Asphenodipsis malacanus. And these, even though these are featured in my videos before in Southern Thailand, in Malaysia, they were a lot rarer than they are in the deep south of Southern Thailand. This is Wainson's lifer. And honestly, the guys I know in Malaysia do not see these often, the serious herpers. And it's huge. Right, like, look yeah. at the size of this thing. This... Biggest malacanus I have ever seen by a significant margin. And it's right. still got the beautiful like white patterning. I can't believe it. We've seen three Asphenodipsas this trip. And this is by far my favorite of all of them. I love this species. I'm, I'm so fucking hyped. Yeah, this, this is, is a definitely a good one. <laughs> mm, absolutely not what I expected to find. I don't know. We must be like near 900 meters ASL tonight. But yeah, it's kind of freaking out. Yeah. These also have like a... It's not so noticeable on this one. They also have a red eye, which is kind of an interesting trait that a lot of these Asphenodipsa share. But this one for sure has this beautiful white and black checkered pattern. Such an intricately marked snake. Of course, it's a Pariatidae, so it never bites. Like, will literally never bite. Gentle as anything. Doesn't even musk this one. Such a beautiful animal. A really unique, special snake and absolutely rare. First time I've ever seen this one in Peninsula, Malaysia. You happy? Very. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. That Malacanus was the last snake of the night. We went to sleep pretty early after that. Ooh. What's this? Oh, wow. Look at that. Just just dropping down on the balcony. I was about to talk about how uh, I keep having to show this view because of how nice it is, but there's some wildlife out here too, and there's a really big, awesome jumping spider. Look how my fingers are still completely stained. I was like scrubbing these last night. It's like iodine stains or whatever, iron stains. Gritty insane, but I love these things. Let's see if we can get a close-up of his eyes. I bet you can see his eyes properly. Oh. Look at that, so cute. So damn cute. <laughs> what a way to start the day. I'm gonna let this guy get back to his business. Hunting bugs on my balcony. All right, I'm done editing a YouTube video and it's time to head out for another daytime herb. If we had anything like the success of yesterday's two snakes, I'll be overjoyed. And pretty much my plan is to spend the whole afternoon out since it's our last, very last day here. So let's hope we get something good. You see a lot of these pigtailed macaques while driving around here. Hold on, film out the window. Oh, oh look at his. You can see he's, yeah, that's definitely a male. Hi. Okay, first find is probably the most interesting thing we found this entire time. I spotted this small skink running across the road from a distance and it disappeared in some leaf litter. We rustled around and like, it is actually beautiful. Like, look at that tiger pattern on the anterior, the black and white banded tail, really an incredibly patterned skink. And, and from the head, I would guess it's in the Sphenomorphus group. I'm thinking it could be a juvenile, potentially Sphenomorphus uh, stellatus juvenile, but honestly, uh, this could be anything. I'm gonna hit, reach out to some experts on the region on lizards and see if we can figure out what this is. Obviously the, the ID would have been on screen by now, but for us, we're here in the dark wondering what the hell we just found. Cause I spent a lot of time in the highlands, especially here, and I've never seen this before. So. Really exciting little thing, very chilled out as well, which is nice. Absolutely beautiful. What a cool, what a cool find. So I dropped Cass off because she had a lesson and Wainson decided to rest up for the rest of the afternoon. So I went out for a little walk by myself, decided to do a trail. Trails are usually not so good for finding stuff here. Um, roadsides are definitely more productive, but I just fancied a trail walk. So let me see if I can find anything. Just gonna rely on luck. Just got another lizard during the daytime and this time it's this beautiful juvenile Certidactylus titiwang zarensis, or Astralo, Australo titiwang zarensis, sorry, I should say. It used to just be titiwang zarensis. Now that group got split into several species. Now we're left with a few different ones, but, oh, come back here, buddy. Actually, I'll just leave him here. Um, obviously, I didn't just find this one active during the day. I flipped a little tin thing and it was underneath and uh, as well as a bunch of ants all over me, I got this beauty and honestly, it's a really, really, really beautiful uh, little juvenile one with some cool banding, so nice to see. 
All right, we're about to start herping, final night in Malaysia, and we just stepped into the shop at Fraser's Hill and I found something I've been looking to try this whole time. Musang King durian ice cream. And it's, it actually it smells, smells like yeah. durian. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like, even looks like, like what you'll get in like a durian, like the seed and everything. Hell, it really does. Hold on, let's take a little look at this first before I take a bite out of it. It looks kind of appetizing, to be honest. But if it, you, I don't, durian. yeah, no, in, in, durian needs no introduction. I'm just going to go ahead and take a bite. It is actually like creamy texture. Just it's like really durian. good. It's actually really good. I'm not going to lie. This tastes exactly like durian to me. This, yeah, no. Is this, is this just like frozen durian or is this actually ice cream? It's made, apparently made with real, real durian. So I don't like it that much. Five yeah, out of yeah. ten. Bro, <laughs> what are you saying? Ten. <laughs> just delicious. <laughs> that's so. That's it. British versus Malaysian. Like, right. That's, yeah. British versus Malaysian taste. I'm changing. I'm changing my rating. I'm giving this a three. I couldn't even finish it. But this guy's going to town. He's giving it a it's ten. Right. This is actually a straight ten. It's good. You get. It's a bang for your buck durian ice cream. You don't get cheap durian ice cream all around. I couldn't even finish it. Cass didn't like it. I'm clearly loving it. <laughs> And just like that, we go from zero snakes to one. And here we have a possible three meter long Boiga Cynodon. Please go stand next to it, Wainson. Dude, I've seen giant ones of these in the past in Borneo, like around this size, but this is the biggest one I've ever seen in Malaysia or Thailand. And it's so thick in the middle. What the hell? Put your hand on the middle, please. That's so robust. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> it's also the most, whoa, it's fired up. Great. It's also the most high elevation Cynodon. This could be like a Cynodon elevation record. For real. Great. Okay. All right, we took some pictures of it and just with Cass holding it, you can really see how massive it is. Like no defensiveness. Well, it's defensive in that it's puffing up, but absolutely no inclination to bite. Just like many of the big cider that I found, very cool snakes. And just look at the size of its mid body. It's kind of transmissive. Well, like you can see through it when yeah. I'm shining with it. Kind of impressive. This is just totally not, not what I'd ever expect to find at Fraser's Hill. But uh, what a way to start the night. And I think this is a good omen that we could, could find some other cool stuff tonight. We took it over to the side of the road and we actually managed to make it calm down to the point like hardly any effort all i did was like put it on the ground and it just completely chilled out and now it's just lying here we haven't been grabbing it haven't been forcing it on the ground nothing like that just gentle handling and now it's just more than happy just to sit here and look special for us i got my camera out and i took some real close-ups of the head which i really like not the kind of thing you usually get to do i got like really close-ups of the eye because a snake this size you can really get up close to the macro lens but yeah Cynodon is, is possibly my favorite member of the Boiga family. I think I've said this before. I absolutely love this species. I love its color composition. I love its head shape, that kind of coffin shaped head you can see from the top, very squared off. And I love the way it gets so big, but remains so uh, placid too. Such a nice animal, such a beautiful, great ambassador for snakes. And if anyone tells you this species is like aggressive slash defensive, it's because they're handling it wrong. You saw us from the very start little bit defensive behavior but as soon as we gently picked it up it, it was uh, calming down extremely quickly beautiful all right let's get on with our night all right, we just saw something weird on the road and i and i thought it was a worm and it was a worm but it was this calamaria schlegelai actually attacking this worm but it seems to have lost it now i'm hoping we haven't disturbed it you can see the worm kind of cruising off but just taking my torch off a bit seeing if that makes a difference Dead. Go on, get the rest of the worm. Oh my god, that's so quick. You do not get to see snake feeding observations that often. <laughs> that was sick. That was sick. All right, it's getting kind of late now. 
didn't turn up any more snakes on our little cruise around. Spent a lot of time with those things we saw. But uh, we're up here for one final walk and we're gonna see if we can turn anything up on the last night before we head to bed. All right, next snake of the night. And this is a very special one for me. I've actually seen this species three times in the past, but this is the first species we found this trip, which was actually a target of mine. And seeing a juvenile was actually even bigger target than seeing an adult. This here is Butler's Mountain Wolf Snake. And, and I know it probably just looks like many of the wolf snakes we see on the channel, but I promise it's different. This one occurs at very high elevations or at least submontane forests, more or less, in Peninsular Malaysia and Southern Thailand. And look at this little thing. Just cruising about here, searching for geckos and whatever, whatever else it may be preying on. Probably just small geckos, to be honest. Maybe it'll take a tiny skink too. I don't know, but this is certainly an awesome find and I'm just gonna pick him up. Oh, little, little reaction. Oh, there we go. He's biting. Never seen this species in its juvenile form before. Seen it three times before, twice here at Fraser's Hill and once before where we were in the Cameron Highlands where they're actually very, very rare. But around here, not too uncommon even though, uh, yeah, well, I describe them as like a little bit uncommon maybe, but super cute wolf snake, really beautiful little snake. I'm certainly gonna get my camera out for this. Okay, fourth snake of the night is this really feisty Fakatus. We can get a good look at this one's tail already. It tapers quite a bit to green. So even though this one appears kind of nebularis-like, we're still going with female Fakatus on this one. And yeah, as you can see, not happy one bit that's probably horrible to hear me like blowing into the mic of this but uh yeah we're gonna let this girl go back to her business as she's clearly very pissed off all right that is going to do it for tonight and that's gonna do it for the end of the night herping at fraser's hill talking quietly because i don't want to wake up the neighbors oh look an interesting nocturne moth